Now you're ready to learn how to use a breadboard to build your first circuit. If you've never seen one before, a breadboard might look a little confusing, but don't worry, they actually make it very easy for beginners to prototype circuits. So in the setup video, we told you to attach the Pi wedge, which is this part here, to the breadboard, which allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi through this ribbon cable. For this video, I'm actually going to disconnect the Pi wedge, but you don't need to do that. I just want to give you a closer look at the breadboard. So. If you look at the breadboard, you'll notice that it consists of a large grid of holes. The holes are labeled in rows and columns. The rows go across and are labeled with numbers from 1 to 30, and the columns go up and down and are labeled with letters from A through J. You can use this grid system to identify the location of a single hole. For example, if I say hole C6, I know I go to column C and go down to row 6, and that is hole C6. The breadboard also has two long strips on either side called buses that are used to supply electrical power to a circuit. There is a power bus labeled with a red plus symbol and a red line and a ground bus labeled with a ground, sorry, a black minus symbol and a black line. And there's one pair of those on each side of the breadboard. So you'll notice that I've been pointing here. I'm holding a jumper wire which has a metal pin on the end. Many components have metal pins like this that are designed to be easily pushed into the breadboard's holes. So if I line this pin up with one of the holes and push in, it snaps into place and it stays there if I tug lightly, but if I pull hard enough, it pops right back out. So that's what makes it very easy to prototype circuits by connecting different holes on a breadboard with wires and other components. So, for example, for your very first circuit, you're going to use jumper wires and you're also going to use an LED, which is a type of tiny light that has two long metal legs that also fit nicely into the breadboard. So I can line that up with holes in the breadboard and press both of the legs in. I can do the same thing with a resistor, which is another type of electronic component that you'll use in your first circuit. You can take the legs of the resistor that are flexible. Initially, they start out straight like this but you can bend them down and also press those into the breadboard. So all you have to do in the project is follow the directions and use the grid system to know which hole to put your wires and components in. Remember that when you're doing this, you will have the pie wedge in your breadboard. You notice that the pie wedge also has rows of pins on the bottom. That's what allows it to fit into the breadboard. And at this point, you wanna double check and make sure that the very first set of pins on your pie wedge is going into the very first row on your breadboard. So holes E1 and F1. So if I line up my pie wedge with that first row and press down, that will make sure that the rows on your pie wedge are corresponding to the rows on the breadboard. You have to be a little careful because you'll notice that the pie wedge kind of covers up the column labels on the top of the breadboard. But luckily, the labels are always printed at the bottom, so you can always read them from down there if you need to. So for your very first project, what you're going to do is hook up an LED, a resistor, and jumper wires that allow you to control the LED and turn it on and off using your Raspberry Pi. To do that, you actually need two jumper wires so you can have a complete circuit for electricity to flow through the LED. So current will come out of this pin on your Pi wedge, go through the red wire, through the LED and the resistor, and then finally back into the Raspberry Pi through the black wire. And that will be your first complete circuit. So you can look at the written directions for an exact diagram showing you which holes to use to build this.